Hey, what's up guys, Arava here, and welcome back to another episode of my F1 23 My Team Career Mode. This is episode number 15 today for the Italian Grand Prix in Season 1. If you guys did miss the previous episode at the Dutch GP, then be sure to go check that one out. Before you see this one, we had a very roller coaster ride at Zandvoort. Not just because Zandvoort is a roller coaster of a circuit, but we started off the weekend getting blocked in qualifying. We had a comeback through from towards the back of the grid, and then we suffered a major and maybe slightly glitchy fuel issue which pretty much nuked our entire race. I was confident about getting a podium at Zandvoort and instead as you can clearly see there we ended up in P19 so yeah not the best day in the office it was a very weird fuel glitch you know minus 0.8 over the race distance whilst I saved fuel under the safety car still reeling from that but we have to move on and just press on and the Italian G may be a very very good race for us because we still have the best engine on this grid which is going to pay dividends at the temple of speed here in Monza but before we get to the race weekend just having a look through we've got the two personal upgrades now coming in so Oscar Piastri is up to 81 overall with boosted racecraft awareness and pace and the focus as well 87 focus really decent I think you know he's going from strength to strength Yes, he didn't score points, I don't think, in the last race. But I think Monza, I think for him, could also be a great one. Because the car really is just going to perform well, no matter what. But at the same time, obviously, we're looking to elevate that even more. And I'm not going to lie, I'm aiming for a podium. I'm aiming for maybe even more than just a podium here at Monza. We're going to have to see. But we go ahead and purchase a rear downforce upgrade. I really wanted to save enough R&D points to purchase the corresponding front upgrade as well. But we just don't have the cost. And I'm may as well just purchase one of them right now to get ahead of the game because those upgrades do take a while to come in. Having a look around, the chassis probably does need an upgrade, but I want to focus on downforce because that's been an issue for us in recent races. And we also do need to be careful about our engine because we are getting caught. We still do have the best engine on the grid, but only by a small margin now as other teams are starting to catch up to us in the standings in terms of the upgrade. So even though we're in a very good position, going into this race actually, we dropped down because remember at Zandvoort we were ahead of Ferrari in the R&D shot but now the AI around us are really rapidly starting to upgrade which is good to see obviously because it's been a bit easy in the last couple of episodes you know you can see you know the inflection point from the Spanish Grand Prix since then we've had a real good run on the teams around us but now you can see Haas have made huge strides to get ahead of Alpine in the R&D chart and Aston Martin are officially on paper the best car on the grid which is insane and is typical Fernando Alonso. He leaves Aston Martin to go to McLaren and it's actually Aston Martin who are now coming out on top and could be very, very good for the rest of the season. But obviously we know the R&D performance chart isn't the gospel. It's not going to totally tell you where the cars are at and who's going to qualify where because obviously the AI, you know, how they perform, the focus comes into play. And then also obviously we've seen with ourselves, obviously just our performances, you know, I have certain tracks where I'm quicker at than I am at some. So, you know, sometimes you don't get to use the full, you know, uh, potential of your car, let's say. But this weekend at Monza is a race weekend. I think we can use the full potential. And we are going balls to the wall with a very aggressive setup of zero, zero wings. Not even just one, one, zero, zero. App apparently there's just basically a plank of wood on the front and a plank of wood at the back as well basically and the speed down the straight it's pretty biblical it's pretty insane it pretty much maxes out the rev limiter to the point where this car starts bottoming out and i think bouncing on the limiter so much by the time we get to turn one the aero isn't amazing in the corners it's still drivable as alexander albon is out of this session what a shame for him in the newly improved aston martin he's out early and can't make use of the best car on the grid now for the green outfit but uh, for the other green outfit ourselves we're going well two greens i'm not expecting insane stuff right now it's the first lap we may need to go again just to get used to the aero basically but we're up to p12 the astri p10 showing that there's definitely a bit more pace in the car for me to find what the hell just happened there there was a tire in the middle of the circuit it's just giving us a puncher what our rear right has been punctured, and there's a tyre in the middle of the road. <laughs> I, 
I saw it coming, like, too late to move, but I also assumed it was just going to ghost through our car. But it physically is there. It ghosted through our front right tire, but then gave us a punch on the exit on the rear right, and now we're driving with three wheels on the wagon. I think that must, that tire must be from Albon. I didn't get a chance to look at a replay when Albon retired because I was, I was obviously in the middle of my qualifying lap, but what on earth has happened here? Q1 at Monza. We've got three wheels on the car. The rear right's been punctured by a stray tire in the middle of the circuit. That is, there's a first time for everything. I think that's the first time that's ever happened to me on the F1 game. Incredible stuff. Wacky stuff. So we come in doing our best Alonso Baku impression from a couple of years ago uh, and come in on three tyres and we're going to have to obviously change this set. We actually now don't have that set anymore for the entire race weekend and we go for a second flying lap and watch closely. Look! The tyre was still there. It's going to be there, I think, till the end of Q1. So there's half a chance an AI car gets caught out with that, with a puncture, depending on the racing line they take towards turn one. It's a little bit off the racing line, but obviously I was on a cooldown lap, so that's why I was, I was in the middle of the circuit. But we move past that, and we kind of recompose ourselves. We're going to need to, because we're down in P17. But on the second flyer, it's safe to say I was way more comfortable now with where the car is in the corners and on the straights. Look at that purple first sector. We get up to P9. It's early days, though, remember. The track will get quicker. We're going to get quicker. Lap after lap, just getting used to 0-0 wings because it's mighty on the straights. But let me tell you, 0-0 wings, you really have to change your driving style for the corners. It's a lot of braking a bit earlier turning in earlier than you think because the car is going to understeer into where you actually want to go and then the rear end very tricky to try and manage on parabolica but i think the time we're gaining on the straights is worth the kind of headache in the corners you know only in this season one car in future seasons i don't think i'm going to be running zero zero wings at monza because you have enough then speed and downforce to extract the lap time but for us right now i want to make the best use of our best engine on the grid and to do that we need zero zero wings in season one it's the time to experiment it's the time to be a bit ballsy and by q2 my ballsy strategy is well it, it's coming to fruition here and showing that is worth it because we are splitting the two red bulls we're only three thousands behind sergio perez incredible stuff we're here fighting for the top positions at monza unfortunately piastri doesn't make it out of q2 uh, but i wasn't expecting him to but i think in the race i genuinely think he might have a good chance actually as we now go into q3 overcast conditions you saw there there was a wash of understeer through that first right hander so i don't think this is going to be maybe as quick as we did in q2 which is going to be a shame because this is my only flying lap in q3 i don't have any other soft tire sets to use that aren't worn out. Uh, obviously, we lost a set. The set that got damaged in Q1. So, as we go across the line, Science goes quickest here for Ferrari at their home Grand Prix. We go up to P5. We're ahead of Verstappen, which is really big for us. And Magnussen as well. But Leclerc Alonso are ahead of us. And we're going to end the session in P7. So, you can see it's quite close, though. There's a fuel spread of about four tenths to Verstappen pretty much and then Gasly and Magnussen clearly didn't have a great lap time in but surprisingly it's the Mercedes that are on pace there Hamilton on pole position Sainz in second Russell Perez Alonso Leclerc down to myself I think we can do better than P7 though clearly our Q2 lap time was more indicative of our actual pace around Monza I I'll admit that last lap just wasn't as good so I think despite being P7 and not on the front row or the second row I think we can aim for the top four minimum and like I said, even more potentially, depending on how the slipstreaming tactics go. Because that's one thing on this game. It's all about the games you play with slipstreaming on the F1 game at Monza. So let's go to the grid and see how we do. Welcome to the home of the Parabolica, now known as the Curva Alboreto in tribute to the Italian motorsport legend Michele Alboreto. It's a long, long right-hander. It dares you to keep your foot as far down on the throttle as you possibly can. It's one of the great corners on the calendar, and we're here at Monza ahead of the Italian Grand Prix. We're 12 miles northeast of Milan for today's Grand Prix at a Monza circuit where we can expect top speeds of around 215 miles per hour. 
11 corners on this 3.6 mile track, with seven of those coming in the form of chicanes. And with a good slipstream and DRS open, there should be plenty of opportunity for some passing here today. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks like for today's race. An immense lap from Carlos Sainz yesterday puts him in pole position, just ahead of George Russell, who starts this event from P2. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Perez, the owner driver, Verstappen, Gasly, Magnussen, Norris, Hamilton, Leclerc, Stroll, Bottas, Hulkenberg, Fernando Alonso, Joe, Oscar Piastri, Liam Lawson, Sonoda, De Vries, Sargent, Albon, and Esteban Ocon lines up at the back of the grid. With preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. Also here, of course, is Anthony Davidson. We should talk about Williams. What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within that team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that's definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. So we've gained one position on the starting grid because Hamilton from pole position has a penalty, unfortunately. But annoyingly, my strategy screen was locked off and not showing at the start of this race. Now, this is a known glitch that I didn't experience up until now. I thought actually the latest patch was meant to fix it, um, but clearly not. So we've been forced to start on the medium time. Ties. To be honest, that's probably the tyre I would have chosen anyway, but still, I really hope that doesn't come into play in later races where I do want to switch the starting tyre, um, because that would be quite a nuisance to you know, ch you know, not be able to change the tyre, basically forced on what our engineer thinks it's best, basically. But yeah, we're starting up, not even P6, P4! How many penalties were there? Okay, I thought it was only Hamilton, but clearly I missed the memo in the starting grid sequence there's obviously some more penalties then because we're starting on the second row then we're already here in the top four so we absolutely have to try and aim for a podium today and maybe dare i say even our second win of the season as we go to five red lights the italian grand prix is on the way it's a slow one for science and george russell we're going to get the jump on both of them into towards turn one we get the red ball and the merc and we're trying Trying our best there, maybe even have a go at Carlos Sainz. There's some debris flying at us at turn one. Someone's had an instant behind us, but no, Sainz holds through for first place for the Tafosi in the Ferrari in P1. But we're up to second place ahead of Russell and Verstappen who are now fighting. So Verstappen's already jumped Perez and is looking to make the most of his soft compound attire. So Verstappen and Sainz. They're the only ones that have gone to softs, it would seem, in this top five, at least. The rest of us are medium. So they're going for a, a quicker first stint and then maybe going on for an undercut. We're going longer and looking to try and keep track position. And if we can keep the Sappen behind, that would be ideal because obviously that will annoy him quite a lot not to be able to use those soft tyres. And uh, Sainz already nearly maybe two seconds ahead of us. So we're going to try and fight Verstappen as much as we can. Get the elbows completely out there and shove him off onto the rumble strip. That was a very Verstappen-esque bit of defensive work on the man himself. And now Russell going for the move on the left-hand side up into third place for Mercedes. But Verstappen comes back at him. There's three wide behind between Norris, Gasly and Magnussen as we come through the Parabolica using plenty of ERS to try and push away Verstappen's kept up with us though. Russell is peeling into the pit. He's got some damage. I wonder, maybe that was maybe that was his carbon fiber as we went into turn one, maybe. And that's how he got the move done on the Red Bulls initially. As we go into turn one, lap two, still in second place, but both Red Bulls right behind us. And there's absolute chaos going on down the order with Gasly versus uh, Magnussen in the Haas, showing Haas really have improved into this race in terms of R&D upgrades. You've got Hamilton stuck behind Lando Norris. Piastri, unfortunately, down in P14, but he, may, he might make a move on the Alfa Romeo. And to be honest, I think he needs to get moving because I think he's got more pace than that. For sure, I'm confident we'll see Piastri in the points by the end of the race. But right now, I've got a very ominous look in my rear view mirrors with two Red Bulls either side of me, Verstappen and Perez pretty much squabbling amongst each other of who gets a chance to try and overtake me first. As we go on for another lap, Sainz with the purple. Now uh, Perez with the fast lap of the Grand Prix. He's up into third place now. Verstappen has been left in the dust 
We defend very aggressively versus Checo to the inside, then move back to the racing line for our one, move back to, the, uh, to that line, and we stay in second place. You know, we're trying our best to hang on here. And to be fair, Science is only 2.6 ahead of us. So he's only gained about, uh, well, 2.5, 2.4. You can see every straight, that time gap's coming down. That's how ridiculous our speed is in a straight line. I'm losing all the time in Sector 2 and Parabolica. But then every straight, I'm gaining a tenth pretty much every, like, five seconds, pretty much, which is pretty mad, as we see Verstappen and Perez once again swapping positions. And we're in a comfortable spot. They're really not bothering me too much right now in second place. It's just annoying that we couldn't get Carlos Sainz at the start as we see more amazing action behind. Look at that. Two by two by two. Hamilton versus his old teammate Valtteri Bottas. Stroll versus Magnussen and Piastri. He's climbed up to 12th and he's now on the back of Nico Hülkenberg. So he's making some progress. But Gasly now in no man's land in P5 along with Lando Norris. Like I said with Sainz he's unfortunately got away from us. 2.8 but that might change because if you go on to lap five, once again, the Red Bulls are right behind us looking to make an overtake. And look at the bottom right. I really don't have much battery left. And so this is going to invite Perez in. He's got DRS open. I'm sure he's deploying as his rain light. I don't think it's on. So he's deploying ERS all the way down here. And into turn one, he cuts across me and defends really well to get up to second place. But this is a blessing in disguise because now every straight I can get even quicker with the slipstream on Perez. I mean, look how much I'm gaining on him without even deploying ERS. And there's no DRS on this curve. Gaining on Perez. In Sector 2, we're losing time, yes. But I'm also going to try and keep up with Perez and use him to guide my racing lines. And then through Parabolica, we've got DRS off him now. We didn't have DRS before. And Perez in Sector 2, obviously, is catching the Ferrari. So the gap is going to start coming down to Carlos Sainz. And we're going to use Perez to pull us along. I mean, the gap to Sainz now is down to two seconds. So we've already closed the gap by a second having let Perez by to Carlos Sainz because the gap was about three seconds to Sainz uh, whilst Perez overtook us. So you can kind of see, even though I've given up a position, overall, we're all gaining on Sainz, even me, and I'm staying in this kind of middle sandwich with Verstappen and Perez, although right now on lap nine, that might be a bit tricky because I didn't have the best exit. Bit of snap of oversteer with the rear end being, well, zero on the wing as we squeeze Verstappen to the inside, go to the outside, and that's going to box Verstappen into Perez's rear end. He had nowhere to go because his teammate was in the way. Perez defending against us, obviously, so he goes to the inside. So it's a perfect combination for us just to go to the left-hand side as we now watch Piastri in the points. Is he going to go for the double move on the Haas and the Aston Martin. He's got the Haas at least of Hülkenberg and he nearly went for the move on Stroll. So Piastri is waking up in this race. He's up to P9 and this is the proof in the pudding that this car has some serious pace around Monza with a season one teammate, you know, only two personnel upgrades. He's going to be running default setup as the AI always do. You know, that's the proof. The car actually has some pace and obviously I've tried to extract even more pace with zero, zero wings, which is being a bit of a difficulty, I can't lie in Parabolica, but we're making it work because again, we've got DRS on Perez and again, look where Verstappen is. He just got boxed in by Perez and we were actually so quick on that straight that I actually had to go for the move on Perez to get into P2 and now we're 1.6 behind Sainz maybe on the entry, 2.2 on the exit. We'll just gain back the time, 2.1, 2 seconds. It's going to be like 1.9, 1.8 maybe by the end of that straight. So we are gaining on Sainz overall but we need Perez to get back ahead of us really I didn't want to overtake him but he was so slow because obviously we've saved ERS now being behind him constantly as we go to the inside now to defend Perez but we don't really have much to defend with him because we don't have any battery in the red ball even though I've got 0-0 wings the red ball with DRS and ERS deployed is still quick enough to get us so obviously it's uh you know just got to pick your battles really once again as we have done a lot this season just knowing when to fight it as Gasly spins himself round at turn one chasing after Lando Norris the uh Alpine was running in p5 or six I think and now he's parked it up really dangerously I must say 
on the uh, inside of turn one. And it's so dangerous, in fact, that the safety car comes out so that they can recover his vehicle or he can recover himself, basically. So we're going to pit under the safety car, as everyone is, because annoyingly, this is a perfect time to pit for everyone, no matter on the soft tyre, medium tyre. So there's no advantage to be gained by diving into the pits here. Everyone's in the same boat. But we come in, we're going to pit onto the hard tyres, as has Sergio Perez. Sainz and Verstappen, they go on to medium. So they're doing an aggressive one stop, soft to mediums. Myself and Perez going more conservative. And that would maybe, you know, you'd think that might worry me. But now we've got a safety car restart where I have a chance to actually make amends for lap one and not only send this on Sergio Perez, but actually try and send it on Carlos Sainz. And if we were to get into the lead, we know we can try and control it and maybe hold the cars up behind us if we just do some good defensive work. So let's go for it as we go on towards lap 14 here. The Ferrari gets us underway in P1. We're P3 and we're tucked up behind Sergio Perez for the perfect slingshot slipstream and now going for the ballsy dive round the outside of Carlos Sainz. Perez dives it in. It's three wide at turn one at the exit and Perez, we make contact with him because he forced his way into the fight. Sainz, poor bless him, he got squeezed out by both of us. So he's down to P3. Perez is the one that leads the race and so I have to relegate myself to once again following Perez but the plan now that we're in second will be Follow Perez, and when the opportunity arises, go for the pouncing overtake into first place, maybe around lap 26, and then go for glory then as Science tries to overtake me and gets it all crossed up. He nearly goes fully into the gravel trap there as he really went way too hot into that right-hander, and now he's down to P5 behind his old pal Lando Norris in the McLaren. He re-overtakes him, Verstappen behind us on the mediums. He's going to be quick but I've got Perez to pull me along with DRS. So I'm hoping that him being there is going to be enough to negate the Staffan's pace and even Sainz on the medium tyres. And you can see I'm literally playing this like a game. I am sticking behind Perez on purpose, lifting off at the right time, just to gain as much as I can without overtaking him and, crucially, without fighting him too much. Because if we fight him, he's going to slow us up as well as himself. Perez goes a little bit defensive here. We go to the racing line, but he comes across pretty quickly. So we've lost maybe a little time there, but that's because I gained so much on him that his AI just instantly defended the inside line, even though I was never going to try and overtake him. And now we may need him to be close to us because Verstappen is only two tenths behind us. So we're going to need this DRS toe. Oh, Perez! No! Oh, my God. He's locked up. Perez, what are you doing, mate? The one time I needed you. My friend, my pal. He's gone. He's, he's locked up. So now he's fighting Verstappen on lap 17. I'm in first, which is great. But the problem is that I've got no DRS now. But they're fighting so much that they're slowing each other up. Perez goes for the re-overtake because Verstappen did get into second after his lockup. Uh, for Checo at Parabolka, that is. And Hamilton now is in the fray. He's up to P4, going for the move on the Ferrari. It's side by side for Lando Norris and Lance Stroll as well. So fighting going on all the time. And all of a sudden, we're 1.2 seconds ahead of Perez. So the two Red Bulls fought each other so much that they broke my DRS. And so that's why on that straight, I decided to deploy all my saved ERS because now the game plan's changed. As we see Sainz now making a move on Perez, it's two by two, it's Stroll versus Hamilton, Norris and Piastri up to P8. And he's on in the train now. He's in the train. So go on, Oscar. Come on. Get some more points. But for us, the game plan has changed. We're now 1.5 seconds ahead of Verstappen. And the plan is to build on that. 2.7 and it's going to grow onto lap 21. So because they don't have DRS on me, it doesn't matter we're losing time in sector two. That's how much time I'm gaining in sectors one and three down these straights. We're deploying a good amount of battery. The only problem, niggling problem is, just like in Canada, when we are going for a race win, we've got gearbox issues. I'm missing fourth gear, which is not great for the end of the lap because you go into fourth gear going to Ascari into Parabolica. So I'm having to ride it out in fifth gear and keep it at a higher gear which is going to leave us a little bit with less exit speed but you can see the gap is 2.9 nearly three seconds we've nearly doubled the gap 
to Verstappen in just a couple of laps because he doesn't have DRS on us. And this is how, car, how quick our car actually is in race terms in a straight line. This is wonderful. It's 3.1 now on lap 22. We've got five laps to go. And we're now, for all intents and purposes, dominating this Italian Grand Prix. Perez has been in the wars because he's down to P8 now. Piastri has got ahead of Perez. And uh, he's, got, he's got Perez for company, though, because he's still there. He's going to have DRS. Albon Leclerc closing up. But the fact Piastri is fighting for P7 with a Red Bull is just so good to see. I'm like a proud dad. Go on, son. Defend the Red Bull. Piastri successfully defends his P7. No! Oh, no. No. Red engine. But my engine is not telling me there's an issue. What? Is this a glitch? No, it's not a glitch. We've actually got a mechanical failure. You're kidding me. From the lead of the Italian Grand Prix, our car, for the first time, suffers an engine failure mid-race and goes up in smokes. I thought it was a glitch because my engineer, usually your engineer says, oh, there's a problem, we're checking, and then he tells you the bad news. But I had no engineer audio whatsoever about this coming. So this is a real shock engine failure. It just went pop out of nowhere, no prior warning from our engineer whatsoever. Oh, that could have been race win number two. That could have been race win number two. And instead, it's an engine failure. Oh, oh, oh. Anthony Davidson, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Well, they certainly stood out as a driver with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalise on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. Red Bull put up an outstanding fight for the front position today, and it's great to see it paid off for them. They do so much for the sport that you can't help but be delighted by today's race win. Max Verstappen being the one who won that race in the end is so infuriating. Like, at least, at least could it, it could have been Sainz for the Ferrari win at their home race. But no, the man leading the championship wins again. And it's because my engine gave up at the wrong time. That is so, so peak. I really thought we were going to emulate Canada winning a race with gearbox issues, but insane straight line speed. And we almost did that to a T. There was only five laps to go, was it? Five, uh, five, four. And the engine went. That's unbelievable. I mean, it was our first ever engine failure of the game so far. So it's take, you know, 15 races in. You know, I've seen other creators get them a lot earlier in the season. So, you know, we can be quite thankful about it's taken this long, but did it have to happen now at this race? A race I was going to win, basically. Let's not beat around the bush. That is uh, unbelievable luck. Unbelievable luck. So Verstappen grows his championship lead. And the Constructors' Red Bull will keep on plowing along uh, on their side as well. As Ferrari and Mercedes really start squabbling with each other. Because, you know, we've had sometimes Russell winning races and doing well. Now we've got Sainz back on the podium ahead of uh, the Mercedes guys. So it's really playing into Red Bull and Verstappen's advantage. But for us... There's no real solace. I can't really take any solace from this race because I've just lost the race win. So that is gutting. That is gutting. Guys, that's that's what career mode's all about. The ups and downs. Guys, if you have enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.